Hi everyone, it's Janine here, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at more examples of L'Hopital's rule. So, recall from our last video that L'Hopital's rule tells us that if the limit as x approaches 8 of f of x over g of x is equal to 0 over 0, or the limit as x approaches 8 of f of x over g of x is equal to infinity over infinity, then the limit as x approaches 8 of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x. So essentially all we're doing here is we're taking the derivative of the numerator and denominator separately to evaluate our limit. So in our last video, we learned how to solve indeterminate forms of the form 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. And in this video, we'll be learning how to solve indeterminate forms such as 0 times infinity, 0 to the infinity, 1 to the infinity, infinity to the zero, and infinity minus infinity. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. So the first indeterminate form that we're gonna be looking at today is zero times infinity. So let's go ahead and take a look at these examples. So in this first example, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of the function x e to the negative x. So when we plug in infinity in for x here, we get infinity times e to the negative infinity, and e to the negative infinity is equal to zero. So we end up with infinity times zero, which is an indeterminate form, which means that we can use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of x e to the negative x. So when we have the indeterminate form zero times infinity, what we're gonna to want to do is move one of our functions into the denominator. So in this case here, let's go ahead and move this e to the negative x into our denominator. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of x over e to the x. And from here, let's go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity, and then we need to take the derivative of our numerator, so the derivative of x is just equal to 1. And now let's go ahead and take the derivative of our denominator, so the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And we can see from here that if we go ahead and plug in infinity for x, we get 1 over e to the infinity, which is equal to 1 over infinity. And so any finite number over infinity is equal to 0. So that is our final answer. So in this next example here, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of the function x times sine of 1 over x. So if we were to go ahead and plug in infinity into our function, we would get infinity times sine of 1 over infinity. And so this simplifies down to infinity times sine, and we have 1 over infinity, which is equal to 0. And so sine of 0 is equal to 0, so we end up with infinity times 0. And once again, we have this indeterminate form, infinity times 0. And so what this means is that we can use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of x sine of 1 over x. And so what we're going to want to do is move one of our functions here into our denominator. And because it's easier to move this x into the denominator, let's go ahead and do that. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of sine of 1 over x, and this is over x to the negative 1. And from here, let's go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity and we need to take the derivative of our numerator. And so 1 over x is the same thing as x to the negative 1. So taking the derivative of our numerator, we have cosine of 1 over x. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of this angle here. So the derivative of x to the negative 1 is equal to negative x to the negative 2. And this is over. And now let's go ahead and take the derivative of our denominator. So the derivative of x to the negative 1 is equal to negative x to the negative 2. And from here we can see that this negative x to the negative 2 in the numerator cancels out with this negative x to the negative 2 in the denominator. And we are left with the limit as x approaches infinity of cosine of 1 over x. And from here we can go ahead and plug in infinity for x. And when we do that, we get cosine of 1 over infinity. And so 1 over infinity is just equal to 0, so we have cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. So in this next example here, we're going to be taking a look at how to solve limits of indeterminate forms when we have an indeterminate form involving some kind of power, such as 0 to the infinity, 
1 to the infinity or infinity to the 0. So the first thing that we need to do whenever we're solving a limit problem is plug in this value in for x. So when we do that, we get 1 minus 3 times 0. And then as our exponent, we have 1 over 0. And so this simplifies down to 1 to the infinity, which is one of our indeterminate powers. So whenever we have this kind of problem, we know to use L'Hopital's rule. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to set this limit as x approaches 0 of the function 1 minus 3x to the 1 over x equal to y. And after this, the next thing that we're going to want to do is reverse the order of these two terms. And then we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So we have the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of the natural log of 1 minus 3x to the 1 over x. And from here, we can go ahead and use one of our log properties and move this 1 over x out in front. And so we can rewrite this as follows. So we have the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x times the natural log of 1 minus 3x. And now let's go ahead and rewrite this so that we have a quotient of two functions. So we have the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of the natural log of 1 minus 3x over x. And from here, we can go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule. So on the left hand side, we just have a natural log of y. And on the right hand side, we have the limit as x approaches 0. And so let's go ahead and start off by taking the derivative of our numerators. And recall that the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of f of x is equal to 1 over f of x times f prime of x. So here, f of x is this function 1 minus 3x. So we have in the numerator 1 over 1 minus 3x. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of this inside function here. So the derivative of 1 minus 3x is just equal to negative 3. And this is over. And we need to take the derivative of our denominator. So the derivative of x is just equal to 1. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So this simplifies down to the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of negative 3 over 1 minus 3x. And from here, we can go ahead and plug in this value for a in for x. And we get the natural log of y is equal to negative 3 over 1 minus 3 times 0. And so 3 times 0 is just equal to 0. And so we have the natural log of y is equal to negative 3 over 1, which is just equal to the natural log of y is equal to negative 3. And from here, we can go ahead and solve for y by exponentiating both sides. And so we end up with y is equal to e to negative 3. And so what this means is that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus 3x to the 1 over x is equal to e to the negative 3. And so this is our final answer. So in this next example here, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of the function x to the 1 over x. And as our first step, what we're going to do is plug in this infinity into our function here. So we end up with infinity to the 1 over infinity. And 1 over infinity is just equal to 0, so we have infinity to the 0. And so this is an indeterminate form. Specifically, this is an indeterminate power, which means that we need to use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. But the first thing that we need to do is take the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the 1 over x and set this equal to y. And as our next step, what we need to do is flip the order of these two terms, and we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So doing that, we have the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of x to the 1 over x. And from here, we can use one of our log properties to bring this exponent down in front. And so we have the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x times the natural log of x. And as our next step, we're going to want to rewrite this as a quotient of two functions. So we have the natural log of y 
is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of ln of x over x. And from here, we can now use L'Hopital's rule. So we have the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. And now we need to take the derivative of our numerator. So the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. And this is over. And now we're going to take the derivative of our denominator. So the derivative of x is just equal to 1. And so this simplifies down to the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. Okay, and from here, we can now go ahead and plug in this infinity in for x, and we get the natural log of y is equal to 1 over infinity. And remember that when we have a finite number over infinity, that's just equal to 0. So this simplifies down to the natural log of y is equal to 0. And after this, we're going to solve for y by exponentiating both sides of our equation. And we end up with y is equal to e to the 0. And so this simplifies down to y is equal to 1. And so this means that the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the 1 over x is equal to 1. And so that is our final answer. The next indeterminate form that we'll be talking about is infinity minus infinity. So in this example here, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of the function 1 over x minus 1 over e to the x minus 1. So plugging in 0 for x, we have 1 over 0 minus 1 over e to the 0 minus 1. And so this simplifies down to 1 over 0. And so e to the 0 is equal to 1. So we just have minus 1 over 1 minus 1, which is equal to 0, which is equal to infinity minus infinity. This is an indeterminate form, and this means that we need to use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. But the first thing that we'll need to do is find a common denominator. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x. And so we're going to multiply this by e to the x minus 1 over e to the x minus 1. And then we have minus 1 over e to the x minus 1. And we're going to multiply this by x over x. And from here, let's go ahead and multiply this out. And so multiplying this out, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x minus 1. And then we have a minus 1 x, so just minus x here. And this is over x e to the x minus x. And from here, let's go ahead and use L'Hopital's rules. So we have the limit as x approaches 0. And so we're going to start out by taking the derivative of our numerator. So the derivative of e to the x is just equal to e to the x. The derivative of negative 1 is equal to 0. And the derivative of negative x is equal to negative 1. And this is over. And now we need to take the derivative of our denominator. So let's go ahead and start off by taking the derivative of x e to the x. So here we'll need to use the product rule. So we have the first function times the derivative of the second function, plus the second function times the derivative of the first. And then we have a minus x here. So taking its derivative, we have negative 1. And so at this point, if we were to substitute in 0 for x into this function here, we would get 0 over 0, which means that we need to use L'Hopital's rule again. So we have the limit as x approaches 0. And now we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of this top function here. So the derivative of e to the x is just equal to e to the x. And the derivative of negative 1 is just equal to 0. And this is over. And now we need to take the derivative of this bottom function here. So let's go ahead and start off with this x e to the x term. So the derivative of x e to the x is found by the product rule. And so we have the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And here we have e to the x. And so the derivative of e to the x is just equal to e to the x. And the derivative of negative 1 is just equal to 0. And now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So we have 
limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x over x e to the x plus 2 e to the x. And from here, we can go ahead and plug in 0 in for x. And so when we do that, we get e to the 0 over 0 times e to the 0 plus 2e to the 0. And so e to the 0 is just equal to 1. So here, this is equal to 1, this is equal to 1, and this is equal to 1. So we have 1 over 0 times 1, which is equal to 0, and then plus 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. So we have 1 half as our final answer. And so that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.